Good morning, folks. We have a lot to discuss today. We're going to start with our star and recall yesterday's forecast that NOAA's forecast would break and the coronal hole stream would cause geomagnetic effects. We're at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last day on the sun getting a bit more active. It had been a few days of calmer corona, but the movement is returning and so is the X-ray production. The small rise and flaring thus far is due to the incoming active regions on the north, including the one that is cresting the limb now behind the big bright one. These will need to be monitored this weekend and into next week as solar flares and CMEs are back on the menu here soon. But let's go back to yesterday. We showed NOAA's forecast from near the start of the day UTC and it was for only twos and threes on the KP index. And at the bottom, below that chart full of twos and threes, is their explanation. They predicted no impacts either from CMEs or coronal hole streams. We strongly disagreed. The impact occurred and ramped up solar wind speed to nearly 600 kilometers per second after the perfect coronal hole signature dance between the density and plasma speed, yellow and purple. Now folks, with that plasma speed, I won't fault Earth's geomagnetic field for entering into a low-level storm, even if the whack it took was a pretty big one for such a small stream and low-level geomagnetic effects. I won't fault NOAA for making a bad forecast, even though I spent hours trying to figure out where they thought the coronal hole stream had disappeared to couldn't figure that one out, but I will call out the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center for their swift change of the forecast 12 hours later. I'm not calling out the recognition of the geomagnetic storm and they're putting the fives on the chart. That's what they're supposed to do. But down at the bottom, NOAA, what do you mean anticipated impact of the coronal hole high speed stream? Your previous forecast said no impacts expected and had KPs of two and three on the chart. Expected impact? It's a plain lie to try to make the bad forecast disappear, and it's a pathetic one. You're not going to get away with those bendijadas when observers are watching. Folks, let's get to some science here. The models of the cosmos continue breaking. That unexpected word comes up again as what we believed it took to make a spiral galaxy apparently was a bit overkill. The earliest spiral galaxy ever discovered is forcing brand new theories about how such a structure could have come together so quickly it doesn't jive well with the Big Bang timeline. Interesting one up next for fast radio burst fans, Hubble has managed to trace tons of these to spiral arms of galaxies. That is key to gain focus and eliminate the galactic core processes as the dominant producers. Folks, there are three microtectite papers in the list today. It's not our normal topic, but it does relate to the disaster cycle of Earth. Excellent new microscope shots of the spherules and an extension of the Australian strewn field into the Antarctic mountain ranges, which further weirds the field and makes one ask, is this really an impact or driven event? Wink to veteran observers there. Some of the observers' favorite solar physicists are here to forecast details in Solar Cycle 25. Owens and Lockwood aren't top of their game. And here they identify the second half of the cycle as being the scarier one. The year they mark is 2026, which I think may be a bit late for the cycle. We may be in the declining phase at that point, but then again, that is when we got the biggest solar flare of Cycle 24, isn't it? We've got an excellent continuation of the recognition of how melting polar ice triggers oceanic processes that rapidly cool the world. Here we are coming out of the last glacial maximum towards the warm Holocene of now, but a wrench got thrown into the system. Polar melt into the oceans, like is about to happen with our modern polar melt. But on a longer time scale, both in terms of the disaster cycle and in publication, missed this one earlier this year and I apologize, but it comports with the others we've seen saying it wasn't humans, it was the vast changes in climate at the Younger Dryas that caused the late Pleistocene megafaunal extinctions. You ready for the next one? We greatly appreciate your support. Eyes on the sun for increasing solar flares. Those notes about the extinction at the end, look below the video and find the disaster playlist. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.